Hey, what's up, guys? This is GM Ren, back with some good and some bad news. The good news is that I'm going to be finishing out Shadowrun Hong Kong. I really apologize for taking so long between the last episode. I got kind of carried away um, modding Skyrim, and those are going to be coming back pretty soon. So any of my Skyrim fans definitely got something to look forward to. Um, but the bad news is that this mission right here is one that I've already done. So I messed up really bad in the last session. Uh, OBS, recent versions of OBS have had problems where sometimes I press my recording hotkey and it just doesn't record. So what ended up happening was I did this entire mission, and it's a very long mission, it took me three hours. And I was spilling my soul out on the microphone. And then when I was done, I had no recordings. So, it really sucks. But I can't, um, unfortunately, I can't like go back in time and just unlearn everything I've learned about this mission. But what I can do is I have a few saves of the mission and I can just go over what, um, the gist of what happens um, in each of the save points. So this mission is we're basically infiltrating the tiger's den um, and we're trying to get evidence on Crate who was the one that put the APB on us back in the main story and she's super corrupt and everybody knows it. We're just trying to get evidence on her. So we've arrived at the docks and this is our insight girl, um, Constable Shung. And we just go through a little bit of dialogue. Um, basically, We go inside. I'm I, I'm trying not to um, actually get her in trouble as well. I mean, if I have to, I have to, but definitely try not to get her in trouble. Um, I'm supposed to talk to Mia and Atman. The front desk guy should just upgrade my badge's clearance. And try to see about turrets and drones. And I don't want her involved, so I just said understood. I asked her why she's doing this, and she said she really wants to be a good guy for a change. I thought this was pretty admirable. Everybody knows Crate is corrupt. So then I go in here, there's a little crumpled note that I didn't get to use. Evidence bag. Some money, because everybody just leaves money around. So like I said, I'm not going to play through this whole thing, but I at least wanted to get to this part so you can kind of see a little bit of the room. So this is where the front desk is. Um, there's a little guy that's keeping a jail cell over there. I didn't end up talking to him. I just went straight to the desk sergeant and started talking. And this was one of the times where the desk guard actually did a really good job. This guy is not the guy that she said would be there. He's a temporary guy that's not normally there. So he was following proper protocol. The normal guy would not have followed proper protocol. So this is one of those cases where it uh, turned out really well. Um, at least for him. So he successfully kept me from getting up my clearance upgraded. I just ran out of options and I said, you know what, I'll take care of this. I'll just call the person that I need to talk to and we'll get this sorted out. So then I walk this way.
There's a few rooms I can explore. There's some money laying around. But the key thing of interest is over here. And this is what gets everything started. There's a guy in here that's obviously in an interrogation room and he's getting beat up. Tells me to shut the door. And the cool thing about this was um, before I did this mission, I was reading some of the forums and a guy had just gotten framed on the forums. And now I see this guy getting beat up and it seems like he's being framed. So I was like, maybe this is the guy from the forums. It's kind of cool thing that um, Shadowrun tends to do is like sometimes the things in the forums, like they're not essential for you to read but if you read them they add a little bit to the game because sometimes you encounter people from the forums or you encounter things that were talked about in the forums and you're like oh hey this is actually integrated into the world um so i chose to back away and just close the door like he asked but then Me being me, I went over here and I sent the drone into this vent. And long story short, on the other side of this vent is that guy. Went all the way over here. And so I got to eavesdrop on a little more of the conversation with this drone and I'm like well chances are they're gonna see my drone and he did and when he did um, I ended up just getting into a fight sorry for zooming through that you can pause it they don't notice my drone at first but then he notices my drone and he starts to... It says he makes a grab for his comm link. So what I really wanted to do here and what I ended up doing here was I gave Z a bunch of cram. I gave him some cram and I had him like zoom all the way in here, open the door, and we killed this guy like immediately. But the problem was as soon as Z opened the door, the alarm went off. And so we had to fight everybody on this floor, which took a really long time. I'm not going to go through that again, but that is what happened. Alright, so by this point we've made it up to the second floor. Um, I actually didn't have to fight all of the guards down there. I fought about, I killed about five or six of them and then one of the guys dropped a upgraded clearance card which I took and then we were all able to just run up to the second floor um, but the alarm is on as you can see here so we get up here there's really nothing for me to do all the doors are locked probably because of the alarm open up this room everybody's already aimed at our weapons and we already know the deal these are crates guys and they're probably just gonna attack us because you know alarm and train police officers and shadow runners walking in so I just chose to attack because sometimes I, th I think when you choose to attack sometimes you get the opportunity like if they attack you, they'll get to take some shots at you first. Um, so we all move into this room. And what ends up happening is we beat all these guys. Well, actually, I'll just skip to the next save and see where that takes off. And I'll give you the whole spill there. Okay, so 
this is my next save and by this point we beat everybody in the command center it's only a few guys um, only those few guys that were there we walked through this door and through this door and we got to this little warehouse looking area in the back there's a computer in the far corner of the room and so I go look on the computer and there's like some evidence stuff laying around here this is the evidence room um, there's drugs and Nguyen and a med kit um, anyway I get to the computer and I type in I type in a crate's name into the search engine and it's like hey search found and then when I get to the page it's like nothing exists for crate so it was like super obvious that somebody had already knew we were coming and they erased the data um, that we were looking for so then when we are leaving this room we get stopped right about here and uh, Chu appears Inspector Chu and she says that my uh, my camera feed blacked out they lost communication with me and my heart rate monitor flatlined so she thought I was dead which is why she was coming in to finish the job um, and right behind her saying that was Inspector Lamb. When Lamb popped up, we all were affected by some kind of magical spell that bound us. It pretty much like weighed us down and immobilized us. And then a few other mages popped out, the people that were maintaining the, the spell. And they started discussing their whole evil plan. So ultimately, Inspector Lamb or Lam was working with Crate as a double agent. So he was like another person and she expected a double agent but she didn't expect him to be also a double agent. There was another guy that was a double agent and she already knew that he was a double agent. But she didn't expect Inspector Lam who she pretty much started the project with. Um, and so we're all bound and this group of mages is here and they're discussing their evil plan which is to have this whole plan go through and then they're going to um, kill Inspector Chu and pin it on us, the Shadowrunners, saying that we killed Inspector Chu and that all this is a result of our mission to try and steal data. Um, but then one of the mages is like, wait a second, something's not right. Inspector Chu, she doesn't have an aura. And if you're not familiar with Shadowrun, um, basically your aura is like a magical, like a magical appearance or a scent or something like that. They all uniquely identify individuals. Um, and she didn't have an aura, which is weird because all living things are supposed to have an aura. Then she jumps up. All the rest of us are struggling, but we can't move. She jumps up and breaks the spell. And it turns out, and she hits all of them with a chain lightning, which is super amazing attack. I'll show it to you in a little bit. Um, she hits all of them with a chain lightning, and we pretty much wreck their whole team in short work. Um, turns out that she is a super gifted mage and she had been hiding her magical power with a special enchanted amulet that she got from the council and so nobody suspected her of being a powerful mage or as powerful as she is so that's how we were able to escape and beat them up but then after that happened, we got back to the command center and Inspector Chu, of course there's, uh, by this time, reinforcements had started to be on their way. So Inspector Chu tried to um, hack this little center terminal and secure our way out of the building, keep all the doors open for us. 
And that's when she was kicked out by some other security guy. Um, and we were informed that the command center was going to be sealed very soon. So we have five combat turns to get out of this, basically this area here, and back into this area here. Um, so this is turn three of all of that. I've gone into this uh, medical armory and picked up some med kits and stuff. By now our team is just stacked with uh, medical supplies because we haven't really needed them. Um, and Inspector Chu is here. Isabel is in the matrix to see if she can secure any event any advantages from their system. Um, I think by now I've hacked and gotten a I've gotten control of no I haven't done it yet but I eventually get control of um, charging stations in the motor port and I'll talk more about that later but before I um, progress I just want to show you how badass Inspector Chu is. She's got ball lightning which is really good and she's got chain lightning and she also has dispel level 3 deflect which is really good it's better than armor um, because it's just a flat damage reduction and she's got dual aim so she'll buff somebody's aim and her own aim in one AP it's great Our heal is on cooldown, so I'll just move her closer to some enemies. Oh, that sucks, because I don't want to do this. You know what? I don't have to do this. I've already done the mission. I'll just end her turn. Actually, I don't even have to go through the motions. I can just check out. Um, okay, fine. We'll kill this guy real quick. This guy is the one keeping us locked in combat. And he's pretty easy to kill. So one cool thing is that there are turrets here that um, Constable Chung was talking about and these are basically training turrets. However, um, I was successful in getting control of the turrets override modules and I was able to change um, their software to be to use lethal force and actual defense smoke grenades like simulation defense smoke grenades instead of um, just being like light training so that's really cool cool way for the decker to add some stuff the turret soaked up a lot of damage from these guys um, and they did a lot of they didn't do that much damage but they did soak up a lot of damage and the smoke grenades helped so before I end this, I just want to show you Inspector Chu. Um, Chain Lightning is just crazy. She can do a dual aim on Z. So she'll buff his accuracy on her own. And then the Chain Lightning. God, why are they so hard to hit? Well anyway, it bounces off the targets. Since I missed that guy, it didn't bounce off of anybody. Um, yeah, he. This guy has the deflect spell on him. I can use that on her, and she's like super, super, super protected because she already has her armor, and then she has her deflect, which will stack on top of the armor. 
the armor limit. So she's like invincible right now. <laughs> There's hardly anything that can hurt her. Um, Gobbit was using a spirit that was here and she summoned the rat shaman as well. Or the rat spirit, devil rat spirit. So all in all, um, we it's very easy to escape the command center, we just have to leave it. So we get out of the command center, the door seals, and we just have to take care of the rest of the reinforcements on this floor before we can go to the motor port. And I will resume this in the next save. Alright, so this last save is um, actually after the whole mission. Um, what's happened since the last, the previous save is that we cleared out the rest of the enemies. Um, the command center got sealed. We were outside of it. We cleared out the rest of the enemies. And then we made it down to the motor port, which is like right in between the outside where we need to hop on the boat and the building. Um, and the motor port was a lot of fun. It didn't, uh, it actually wasn't very eventful, but it was still very fun because previously Isabel had hacked into the matrix and she was successful in getting, um, motor port, basically motor port executive control. And she was able to use that to override, um, the safety mechanisms and the charging stations basically you have a whole bunch of electric cars in this garage and they're all sitting on charging stations and lo and behold they are great places to use for cover so a whole bunch of enemies would go and stand behind the cover of the um, charging port and then I would just literally press a button and it would blow up and if they were right next to the car it would be a one-hit kill and it was so beautiful the explosions were really good I'm sure you can find another YouTube video that uh, where you can actually see the whole thing. Um, so yeah, that was pretty fun. I didn't have to actually fight a bunch of people. It was more just a getaway scene where the only thing I had to do was get to the other side of the map. But best believe I blew up like three or four cars and with people next to them and it was great. So, um, we hopped on the ship and Jomo leads us away, whipping the wheel, not spilling his drink, um, singing Indonesian songs. And we arrive, um, we were gonna go back to the impound lot, but then, uh, Inspector Chu was like, no, 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 we can't go there because that whole lot could be compromised. Like, she doesn't know who she can trust at the moment. Um, which reminds me, I forgot one one minor, possibly big detail. Um, when Inspector Lamb, after we beat Inspector Lamb and all of his mage guys, um, he was still alive, like half burned to death by her electric attacks. Um, but then we witness her using the magical probing and torturing to get uh, information out of his mind. So now she knows a whole lot more about the whole situation by searching through his memories. So that's a huge advantage for us. Um, but she says she doesn't know if she can return to the impound lot. So we're like, where are we supposed to go? That's when Jomo pipes up and says, oh, well, you seem to be in a pickle, and I have somebody that can help you with that. Real safe place. Nobody can get can reach this place but me and a few other authorized people. So then we're like, well, what about our ship? And she literally, on the boat ride, called in some favors from like high up in corporate and had our entire boat towed to this new location. So here we are, the Benteng, if that's how to pronounce it. So yep, we got Ten Karma. I'll just go through the rest of this naturally. 
Um, cause this is pretty much where I am now. This looks like a pretty big boat. Loho Joa Fleet. He claims that we'll be safer here than in Hyoi. And nothing enters these waters without Captain Utama's permission. I'm like, yeah, they, they don't need to enter the water. Like, there's landmines all around this thing, but they can just send aircraft and drones. That's some pretty heavy artillery. That that looks like that looks like it'll take down any plane easily. And also he says that it's already taken down planes and air or drones and aircraft. Yep, and the mines pretty much wreck everything else. The only things that can get close are small nimble ships like Jomo's, uh, what do you call it? Drunken Mistake. With a scout pilot. And this guy just looks so sleepy. Like his portrait. It looks like he's ready to doze off. Okay, I believe you now. That's some pretty, uh, pretty impressive stuff you got there. So Captain Utama's waiting. She's not very patient. I guess my crew can't come with me. And this is where we find out that they towed our boat. Like, they literally towed our boat out to sea. Industrial lifting airframes, jeez. Alright, they can wait in the Kraken. Okay, so this is basically where I am now. All caught up. I just need to go talk to Captain Utama and see what she can do for us because we're kind of in a pickle right now and we need some help. Alright, so um, thanks for sticking around. I'll catch you in the next episode. I'm actually excited all over again for this because this is really interesting. Um, not only are there more missions, otherwise they wouldn't put me in a place like this. And they wouldn't bring the Kraken. So there's got to be more missions. I thought that was the last episode. But not only are there more missions, it's also been a really interesting um, extra campaign going on here. Like This is all like really nice writing and fun. And I'm getting more karma. My character is still leveling up, so... Man, I thought it was over, but we got some more fight in us. Alright, so I'll catch you guys next time.